This short screencast is going to uh, complement the blog post that I will have a link to in the notes uh, for this um, on this video um, that I wrote about how I like to customize and extend uh, my command prompt on uh, Mac OS. So the first thing I'm going to assume is that in the blog post, I assume you've already got Homebrew installed on your Mac. Um, and, and just in case you don't, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to install that. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Safari. And because I don't have anything on this Mac, this Mac is completely clean. In fact, I'm doing it all inside of a virtual machine. Uh, so everything is like super, super clean. So I'm just going to do a search for homebrew Mac OS to make sure I don't find anything about brewing beer at home. And the install for this is really easy. Uh, you're really just going to come over here and just do this curl command. So I'm just going to grab this curl command right here. So just copy all the way to the parentheses ah. so like that and I'll come over here and open up uh, term the terminal window and let's see if we can't bump that no that's fine how it is I'm gonna go ahead and paste that in and uh, let's come back over here oh we just grabbed the whole thing that's fine so I'll go ahead and run that hit enter it's gonna ask me to put in my admin password So that install process took quite a while. And the main reason for that is because Homebrew uh, requires you to install the Xcode tools. Um, it does that for you behind the scenes. And uh, so it's got to download the Xcode tools first and some other pieces, and then it goes and installs everything. So unfortunately that just takes a while, but um, that's a one-time thing that you're going to just do in one time. Um, so after doing that, I'm going to run brew doctor that just makes sure that everything's clean, make sure we're in good shape. It uh, shows that, yes, you're now ready to brew. So then I'm going to install one new thing called brew install cask. And what cask is, um, is a, another, like an extension or an add-on to homebrew that allows us to install um, other things uh, that are not available to us just as like brew. So the way I look at it is that Homebrew, just the basic one, is great for utilities or things that don't have uh, an install prompt associated with them. Cask is an add-on to it that also has uh, when there's an install prompt and you need to answer questions. So it can be like uh, things that can do instrument the, uh, the questions you would normally have to ask. So this is, you always install Homebrew, you always install Cask immediately after it. Okay. Just like I did before, I'm going to run Brew Doctor, make sure everything's good, shows that everything's good. Um, and then I'm going to also, just for kicks, I'm going to install something called Bash Completion. And what that does is adds some completion um, uh, things to my command prompt. Now you'll see here that it actually, it might tell you some extra stuff that you need to do at the end. So here it says, add the following lines to your Bash profile. And so this just shows you, you know, how you're going to do that, where the profile is. So it's in my home directory, and it's called the .bash profile folder. Uh, I don't use bash. I use um, ZSH. So for me, this is not really important. So now that I've done that, uh, the next step is to go install ZSH. So I'm going to say brew install ZSH, and I'm also going to install something called ZSH completions. So now both of those are installed. Um, the, you see here that one of the things it says is that to activate the completions, I need to add the following to my .zshrc file. So if I try to say open .zshrc, I bet you there's nothing there. So sure enough, there's nothing there. So what instead I'm going to do is I'm going to say touch .zshrc, and what that'll do is create the file so that then I can go through and open this guy up. So it'll open it up here in the little, a little text editor, and I'm just going to grab this string right here and paste it in and save my changes. So now that's all done. It tells you a few other things. For me, I don't really have to do this stuff, so I'm okay. I'm just going to leave it um, as is. 
Now the next thing I want to install is oh my ZSH, which is an add-on or it's going to live on top of um, ZSH. It's for managing your ZSH configuration. So I'm just doing a search for oh my ZSH, and this will take me to the oh my ZSH uh, site. And then from there, I want to go and install this guy. And so I just need to find the install step that they that they tell us, which is right here via curl. Just run an sh with this guy right here. So I'll copy this, come back over to my command prompt, paste that in, and run. I also have to pass, put in my admin password. And now, oh, my ZSH is installed. So now I've got ZSH installed. Um, and now what I want to do is to customize my command prompt or use a special command prompt. And so I don't like using this terminal window. I'm going to use something called iTerm. So I'm going to say brew cask install iTerm2 to go install uh, iTerm2. All right, so now iTerm is now set up. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. So I'll say open up iTerm, and we have this nice black command prompt where I can do go check folders and files and all of that stuff. Now, the next thing that I'm gonna have to do is I wanna go in and uh, add a, do a bunch of additional work here. So I'm gonna wanna go copy some fonts in. I'm also gonna go through and copy uh, my theme in. Now for me, I'm on a virtual machine. And so what I've done is I've kind of mapped in a shared folder here. So if I look at all the volumes that are on my machine here, sorry, just volumes. I can see I have my main hard drive and uh, Macintosh HD, and then I have the VMware shared folders. So I'm going to change directory into volumes slash VMware shared folders, and then I know there's a folder in there called iTerm that I use to list out all the, that we use to put a bunch of stuff in. So here what I'm gonna do is I wanna go in and copy all the fonts over. So the way I'm gonna do that is I'm gonna say, let's go um, inside that fonts folder, I know that there is a uh, font here called um, the Meso LG MDZ regular font for Powerline. So I know that file's there. I'm gonna copy that over to my library slash fonts folder. And just to make sure that we can see this stuff. So let's go open up Finder and I'm going to jump to library slash fonts. So we can see this stuff show up. And I'm going to then go run this command over here in terminal or in iTerm. And there we go. We have the Powerline font show up. I also have another set of fonts that I want to, I want to copy over. This is going to be in a subfolder. Um, and this is going to be um, the fonts are going to be called Source Code Pro. So I'm going to take that folder and I'm going to copy that to the same folder as Source Code Pro. So there we go. We've got both those fonts over there. So now I have my OTF font right there for... Um, Powerline, and then some, a bunch of fonts for Source Code Pro. Those are all done. And then the other thing I'm going to do, last but not least, I'm going to also come in and I'm going to copy my um, my a theme file over that I have. So you see, I have this Bullet Train um, ZSH theme. I'm going to say copy uh, this file here, Bullet Train theme, and I want that to go into a folder called uh, Oh My ZSH themes and that's going to go um, in the in a, this folder that's this oh my zsh or the dot oh my zsh folder that's off the root of my profile all right so that's all good so i have all that stuff done now i'm in really good shape so the changes i'm going to have to make are to uh, iterm and what these changes are going to do they're going to need to change the font and a couple of color things so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go hit um, go to look at the settings for iterm i can get rid of terminal Terminate that. I can get rid of source code. Pro. I can get rid of this uh, Finder window and I can get rid of Safari. And let's open this up. Let me see a little bit more. And I'm going to go look at the preferences for iTerm. So first thing I'm going to do is go to Profiles, to Colors, and I'm going to import some new color uh, settings. And on my machine, I've got uh, these shared folders, let's bump up the Mac. We'll come over here to my shared folders, iTerm, color presets, and I'll grab all these colored presets right here. Um, all these files that you see me like grabbing and importing and all that stuff, they're all available in the download with the associated blog post. 
Um, I'm going to switch over to text and I want to change the font for my text. I want to use the power line. So there's power line right there, power line, power line. We're all good. So that's good. Close that out. I'm going to say use a different font for non ASCII. I'm actually going to pick the exact same font. Okay, we can see that the, everything just changed over there. So I got my color set up, got my dark theme. I'm going to pick the theme that I want to use. I'm going to be dark fixed. It's going to fix some stuff up. There we go. There are those settings. And now I'm good to go. Now you can see there I have all my settings. Now the trick is, is that I don't have, you know, iTerm is now set up with the font that I want. It's set up with a bunch of other things. But what it's not doing is it's not giving me like this, uh, this nice prompt, this nice command prompt. It's just saying the current folder that I'm in. And that's boring to me. So what I want to do now is I want to actually customize and tell ZSH to use the theme, bullet train theme that I had set up. So what I'm going to do here is we're going to just jump back and we're going to open up the folder, um, my ZSH RC file, which is my configuration file. Oh, not CD, sorry. We're going to open slash dot ZSH RC. And what I'm looking for here is this line right here. It says ZSH theme is currently Roby Russell. That's the, the original author of, of uh, ZS, oh, my ZSH. I'm going to change this to be the bullet train theme. Now, I know I have the bullet train theme because if I come over here and I go to dot o my Z, ZSH themes and do a uh, list everything out, I'll see that I have one theme here called, ah, scrolling issues, there you go bullet train theme right there. So I'm going to just type that in and say bullet train and save my changes. Now when I do that, close out of this, close out of iTerm, and then I'll come back in and launch iTerm. Now I can see my command prompt has changed, which is really cool now. So we can see there's a timestamp that I've got listed there. There's the current folder that we're in. If I go, say, go to the desktop, I can see there, I can see the folder that I'm in right here. This blue, the screen thing here, as I explained the blog post, that's where the version of Node would show up if I'm using NVM, the Node version manager. I don't have that installed because again, all I've done is install things on this Mac that you saw me install on this screencast. Um, the last part here would show me a duration. If there was something else that happened over here at the very end, um, uh, if I ran a command for longer than two seconds, it would show, it would display that stuff. So this screencast is pretty much wrapped up. Uh, what you saw is first I installed Homebrew, uh, and then after installing Homebrew, I installed uh, Homebrew's uh, add-on called Cask. I then used uh, Homebrew to install ZSH, and then oh my ZSH, and then copied some uh, settings in. Sorry, then I also installed used Homebrew Cask to install iTerm, copied some new colors in, copied some fonts in, and then copied a, a theme in and told. Uh, I term to use that theme so that I can get this nice experience here. So hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see some more details about it, and where to get the resources for this, just make sure you check out the blog post. It's in the link in the video in the notes on the uh, uh, below this video on uh, YouTube.